Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyela and today we're going to be making a kitchen hutch. I believe this would be suitable for the 112 scale. I designed it uh, specifically for my little gnome there. It is about five and a half inches tall and about four and a quarter inches wide. This is actually a better version of my first hutch that I made last year. I did this one with cardboard and wood filler and I made a lot of mistakes along the way. So what I've done is I've taken the same sort of measurements and I fixed the mistakes, gave it a better top and that's how we ended up with this piece here. This piece looks and feels just like wood but there's no wood in it. I made it with a, a chipboard, a homemade chipboard that I make myself. This is recycled cereal boxes and I do have a tutorial that will show you how to make this. Uh, to make this one hutch here I use two sheets like this, four, millim four millimeters thick and the sheets are about seven inches wide by ten and a half inches long or so. You can also use cardboard or foam board. If you use cardboard I would suggest using a wood filler as well to fill it in any open edges and in fact this hutch right here is made with um, cardboard from a coffee box and wood filler. So in this video before we start painting the pieces if you use cardboard I'm going to also show you how to use the uh, wood filler to fill in the edges so you can get these nice clean edges and in the end it'll look like you've used wood instead of cardboard. So if you use cardboard to follow along do grab some wood filler and I'll show you how to use that before we paint the piece. If you wanted to make your homemade chipboard that tutorial is up here in the iCard and also in the description box below. It will also be linked in the blog post that has the measurements for the hutch and that is also up here in the iCard and also in the description box below. You'll need a ruler, exacto knife, a pair of scissors, a pen, tacky glue, hot glue, and the paint that I used for this hutch is a chalk paint and it's called Treasure. I also used a burnt umber, some paint brushes of course, and sandpaper will come in handy. I'm not sure exactly what I used here. It's a super fine one. It doesn't really matter. You just want to be able to sand down any rough edges if you get any. And I also added a clear coat on top of everything. You don't have to do the same. I've only done that because I used a chalk paint and I used an interior water based. Alright my friends, let's grab all our supplies and let's get started. So my back piece is going to be four and a quarter inches wide and five inches tall. So four and a quarter, four and a quarter, okay now I'm going to do my five inch mark The one thing I will say about this homemade chipboard, you have to have a sharp knife. I'm using a dull X-Acto knife and I want to try to get through this project without having to go to town and get more blades. But the sharper the blade the better so you can get a clean cut. Because my blade was dull it kind of dragged along here so this here will show up in your finished piece so that's one thing to keep in mind when you're building with this stuff. And once it's painted it will cover up some of that. We can sand over anything we need to. So now we're going to do the side pieces that sit on either side of the hutch. So we are going to do one and three quarter inch wide. We have our back and our side pieces and we are now going to make what I call the countertop. So it's going to be one and what is it? One and three quarters wide. Okay, and then it's going to be four and a quarter inches long, four and a quarter, and we're going to cut a little bit off this length in a second here, and I'll show you what I mean. Keep these little pieces, you don't want to throw those away. Alright guys, so when we glue this together, it's either going to be uh, the countertop can either be uh, glued on the inside, like if you put these on the just on the inside, if we glue these just on the inside edge like that, or on the outside edge. So we have to determine which way we're going to glue it. I'm going to do it on the inside edge. 
like this. Which means I'm going to have to take off a little bit of length in this countertop. And the amount of length is exactly the width of these two pieces put together. So what I'm going to do, instead of getting exact measurements and figuring that out with my ruler, because I'm not really good with that kind of stuff. Like, so let's just do it this way instead. Make it easier all the way around for my brain. I'm going to put it here on the end of that countertop. I'm going to draw a line. That is the width of those two pieces together. And that's how much I have to take off. And now it'll fit perfectly inside those two pieces. So now that fits perfectly inside and those fit just on the inside edge. Okay, and next you need two shelves and you want them an inch wide and they have to be the same length as your countertop. Okay, now we're going to cut a strip that goes inside underneath this countertop. It fits under here. I've already cut mine. It's one and a half inches wide and it's going to be the same length as our countertop. So I can just cut it with my scissors. And this is what our cupboard doors and our drawers are going to be sitting on top of. Alright, so the bottom of our side pieces, we can add a little design if we want to, like I did here. All I did was just draw a line. And down. I'm going to cut out this one and then I'll use it as a template on the other side. And you can also sand this stuff. And I take a little sandpaper and I just go in there and smooth it all out. So the other thing we want to do to these pieces here is create this little design and all I did was just draw lines from point to point. So the for where my shelf is going to be sitting, my first counter top shelf, is an inch and a half from the bottom. So I'm going to mark that off here on the front, an inch and a half from the bottom. So that's where I'm going to start cutting in and I don't want to go past uh, the width of my shelf so the width of my shelf is an inch so I'm going to mark off an inch here from the top to the bottom so there's my inch and a half there and here's where my shelves are going to be sitting so I'm just going to draw a little bit of a line here, like that. Okay, and I'm going to cut just on the outside of that line so I'm not going too far inward. If you're unsure at first, it's better to cut too little off than too much to start with. Okay, so I'm going to use this one as a template for the other one. And feel free to play around with this, the uh, design, because I mean this is just basic shapes. I'm not doing anything fancy at all. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. There's a couple of different options for you. I have made a little stopper for the countertop to sit on. Before we add that stopper, I uh, did something with this one here. You see those lines in the back? I actually made cut lines across. Now keep in mind if you do that you will end up with a little bit of a wavy look in the back, which I don't mind at all. Popping in with an edit. This piece here was made with my chipboard 
and this piece was made with regular cardboard and you can see I didn't do the cut lines on the cardboard. I wasn't sure how that was going to turn out and because of a time crunch I didn't want to experiment. So I do know that the cut lines work well with the chipboard. Don't know how well it would work out with the cardboard or foam board. So if you wanted to do it that way, before we do anything else, before we add a stopper, so this one is 11 centimeters across. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark off one centimeter, one, two, three, four, at the top and at the bottom. Okay, I'll do the bottom. Don't turn it upside down when you mark the bottom. Go across the bottom just like you did the top so you have even lines going down. So top and bottom and now I'm going to use my exacto knife and I'm going to cut those lines. I'm going to pull it across twice for each one. I don't want to cut right through. That's not what I'm doing. One, two, and I'll do two for each line. Two cuts for each line. Okay, and now we can just pull those lines open. And now when you paint them, it looks like boards have been glued together. And of course I didn't cut all the way through. And these straighten right back up again. And once you paint it, you will have to open them again. So don't worry about it being perfect just yet. So back to my stopper idea. I'm not going to glue this in place yet, but I am going to mark the line for it. So my countertop is going to be sitting an inch and a half from the bottom. So I'm just going to mark a line across. Now that I have these lines across, I don't want to put a stopper there yet. So if you've chosen not to do these lines, then you can go ahead and put your stopper in place. This is just for your countertop to have something to rest on when we glue it in place. Okay, so if you haven't done the lines, you can go ahead and you can glue the stopper right underneath that line. And you want, don't want it as wide as your piece. You see how much space I have there? So now my countertop can sit on that when I glue it in place. But like I said, I'm going to wait. So I'm just going to mark this stopper. And I'll set that aside. And once I've finished painting my back piece, then I will glue my stopper in place. So next, I'm going to show you how I added these stoppers here. Alright guys, in the same uh, reason we have a stopper there for the countertop, we want to have one for this front piece as well, for it to sit on. And this front piece is going to have pieces that look like uh, doors in drawers, just like this one here. So we meet, need to make the stopper the same length as the bottom of your side piece. And then we're going to take off two widths of these shelves combined, just like we did for the countertop and the shelves. We're going to cut that in just a little bit more. So just cut a little bit under that line. And now let's cut this piece in half and that will give us two identical stoppers one for each side piece and now we can just glue these here okay and then when you glue the other one make sure you're gluing it on the right side I actually made a mistake just now and put it on the wrong side arrange your pieces and then you can put your stoppers on that way we know it's glued on the right side You can play around with this design how you want to. I just decided on two drawers and a door. And my drawers are two inches long and they're half an inch wide each. And then my door is an inch and a half by a little bit better than an inch because I want it to be the same width as these two when they're spread apart a little bit. All right, my friends, next we need to uh, cut four pieces. And this is gonna make the top piece. Now, at the time that I was filming this tutorial, I didn't even know what I was gonna be doing with the top piece. So it looks like I've jumped ahead of you, but I haven't. We're actually gonna build uh, the top piece now, and then we're gonna set it aside. And I want you to feel free to play around with this, this 
this design. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. This is just something simple. I was trying to keep it as simple as possible. So there's going to be a top piece like this and then a strip that goes around it here. But again, you can play around with that. Okay, so this piece here is made out of four separate pieces. So let's cut those. The bottom part here is four and a half inches long. And then it's going to be an inch and three eighths wide. So that's just two ticks longer than an inch and a quarter. And then the second piece is going to be four and a quarter inches long by one and an eighth. And then you need four strips. They're all three eighths of an inch wide and two strips at four and three quarters long and then two shorter ones at one and one two three eighths and remember you can play around with this a little bit after you get them cut if they're a little bit too long you can always trim them up it's better to have them a little bit too long than too short And then this decorative piece in the front is a quarter inch wide and it's the same width as your piece exactly from the outer edge to outer edge which is about four and a quarter inches and I just did one across the front I didn't do the sides and then at the very end of the video I ended up adding a strip in the back there see that just covers up the unevenness on top and cleans it up that's a quarter inch wide and it's the same width as the inside of your piece which is about four and an eighth you can cut that at the end if you want to make it exact straight across you don't actually even see it unless you turn your piece and look inside so the first piece gets glued on top of this one straight in the center so we're going to be gluing these pieces around it And then these corner pieces, to be quite honest with you, I'm not good at this. So all I did was just cut off the very corner on a slant. And you don't want to make you don't want to bring that down too far. Like that. And then the other side in the same direction, just cutting the corner. Then the other one. See now, if you put it on top of each other, that's all I took off right there. So I'm going to do the same one on this one. And then the same on this. These two, you want to take even less off, almost straight up and down. In the same direction. Okay, I'm going to load this up with glue all the way around. And I put it in on a bit of a slant. And this one. Okay, I think I managed it. So I'm going to have to put some more glue in there. That's not perfect, but you get the idea. And I wish I was better at these kind of corners and stuff like that. One day I will get better. It just takes practice and like I said, that's the first one I've I've done. Okay, I just want to make sure that that doesn't come apart in the future. So I'm just going to load her up and glue along the edges there. And then I'm going to set it in front of my fan and let it dry. I'm going to be painting all of my pieces the same color. I'm using a chalk paint called Treasure. And then the um, countertop, I'm going to be doing a different color. I'll be doing this burnt umber. And I'll be doing two coats on all pieces. All right, my friends, if you used cardboard, then you probably have these open pieces here, or these open edges. 
and those are no fun when you're painting and it won't look good so you'll want to fill that in with wood filler in the next clip I'm going to show you how I do that uh, before I paint the cardboard I'm just going to fill those in with wood filler and I'll do that for all the open edges that will be seen and then I'll paint the pieces all right, I'm ready to paint now. And what I did was after that first layer was dry, I went ahead and I did another layer of that uh, wood filler. And now that it's dry, I did take a sandpaper and sand all the edges just to take off any big glumps of that wood filler. So in this piece, for whatever reason, my lines weren't showing up, so I'm just going to take a pen, open up those lines, and just run it right down. I am popping in with an edit because I want to be super clear so you know exactly what I was using. I was using a felt pen, and I used a felt pen because that gives me ink coming off both sides as I ran it along those lines. This is actually a fabric pen because that's all I had on hand. If you don't have a felt pen, then a black pencil will work too. You just might have to work at it a little bit more. Uh, just run it up and down those lines. After I was done uh, painting, I did do a, a slight dry brush with a burnt umber, and that just kind of dirties up the edges. I also sanded the edges down a little bit too, so give it a little bit more wear. After all of that, I did do a clear coat, and I used a Varathene. Uh, water-based interior. You don't have to use the same one. I clear coated it because um, I realized that once I started gluing things together the glue stain could have showed up on the chalk paint because chalk paint's very it has a very chalky finish so if you put glue anywhere and it slides you'll see that. So I decided to pre prevent that from happening by doing a clear coat first. So that's much better and the chipboard will go back into shape really easily. You just have to bend it back in. In fact, all your pieces, just make sure that they are straight before you start gluing them together. Sometimes you just have to bend them back into the shape that they're supposed to be. All right, we're going to start assembling from the bottom to the top, and I'm going to be using tacky glue and hot glue, and the hot glue is only to hold things together while the tacky glue dries. Okay, and I'll just bring in something to lean it on for a second while I get it ready. And this lines up from edge to edge of the back piece, like the bottom lines up at the bottom and the top at the top. So, bottom part is not going to be seen at all. So, I'm just going to run a bead of hot glue at the bottom, and that's going to hold that in place for me while I get the other piece on. Hot glue is like a second pair of hands. It's a wonderful thing. Okay, and then stand it up and make sure it's lining up. And then once it is, you can go ahead and drip some hot glue around the edges in there. I'm just going to brush out that excess glue. I'm just going to let this dry. Make sure everything is standing up straight. Stand it on your tabletop. Make sure it's standing up straight. Now see this part up here is bowed inwards. So I'm just going to set something in there to keep it straight. So I have both sides lined up here. Alright, now the piece is ready to be played around with. It's all dry in there and everything's nice and sturdy and held together. The sides are glued in. What I've done to make my life easier is cut four of these strips of cardboard. These are an inch wide because my shelves are going to be an inch apart starting from here. An inch and then another inch. And I cut them kind of long so I could fold them in half and they're going to sit in here like this. Okay, so I'm going to glue the sides of the shelf and the back. So 
let's just take a paintbrush and get that excess glue out of there. Okay, I'm going to put the other shelf in. And you want to make sure that you don't have glue, so much glue there that it's going to glue these cardboard pieces down. We don't want the cardboard to be glued in there. Popping in with another edit because you can't see the drying time in between the steps. When I glued my shelves in, I let it sit for about 15-20 minutes. Then I glued in the top piece. I let it sit for about 15-20. Then I moved on down here. Let these sit for about 15-20 minutes before I added my handles. So you see how it sticks out just a little bit in the front? And that's what I wanted. Now I'm going to... How should I do this? I think I'll put glue here on the ends. And then glue on the very top of this piece here. So if you're doing drawers and doors like I am, I would put the door on first and definitely map out the design first and make sure you have room before you put the door on for the drawers. And then I put the drawer in line with the bottom of the door. So I think I have the handles figured out finally. I'm just going to do a little, uh, what would be wooden knobs, but this is the same material of course and all I did was just cut a circular shape out of it and then trying to get them all the same sort of size and same evenness around I just hold it with my fingernail and then rub it on the sandpaper and, and do that all the way around and so far I think that's going to turn out they're not exactly perfect but with, once the paint's on there and everything I think it'll be okay And just a little dot will do. If you see glue oozing out the sides, I just take it off with a dry brush. On my chipboard hutch, I did these little circle handles. And those were easy enough to do with the chipboard. Proving a little bit difficult with the cardboard. I could cut a bunch of circles, I suppose, and then glue them all together. Um, doing it this way, I'm just getting a lot of unevenness. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make handles like... I made here and the original idea for this kind of handle came from Bentley House Minis. Um, mine is a simplified clunky version of her awesome handles and I would check them out on her channel. Actually I'll put a link in the description box below because she has tutorials for all sorts of different handles. This is cereal box and I've chosen this part here where it's been glued together so it's a little bit thicker. I'm just going to cut a long strip and then I'm going to cut one, two, three, four, five, all the same length. And what I do is just trim the ends into a point. I push down on the point and push up from underneath. I could do a better job than that, but I'll just <laughs> leave it as is. And then I'm going to paint it, and then I'll glue these on. I don't know if I showed this part on film or not. After I painted my piece, I do go over it with a burnt umber just dry a light 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 dry brush and I like that look you don't have to do the same thing just kind of rough up where you think the wear and tear would be I 
I've already done these pieces, but I thought they could use a little bit more. So looking this over now, there's a couple of things that I would do a little bit differently the next time. Uh, this piece under here, I would definitely paint that before I glued it in. It's not a big deal because you can't see it when you're just looking dead on. And also, there's a little space between this top piece and the top of my hutch. And I can see, actually, light coming through there, which I don't like. It's just a little bit of unevenness, which is totally normal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint this little strip that I just cut, and I'm going to glue that in the very top there. And that will just cover that up. I'm probably going to paint this too, just to make sure that those things are taken care of because I know that they're there even though someone else won't see it when they're looking at it but I know that's there so that's bugging me so I'm going to fix that right now there we go I feel better about that knowing that that looks nice and even and finished off inside there all right my friends that brings us to the end of this video I hope you had fun I hope you got yourself a little hutch made and if you did make one I would sure love to see it you can post pictures on my Facebook page where the gnomes live thanks so much for watching and we'll see you super soon